Hey, Smart Homers, John Stone, the DIY Smart Home Guy with the ultimate DIY Smart Switch Guide. You see what I did there. I just revamped my three-way switch how-to section on my website, azhb.com. It's a lot of information, so it seemed appropriate to release a short tutorial video about how to use the site. Stay tuned. The first question is, why is this so darn complicated? As you're probably aware, I've made several three-way switch videos for various configurations with various manufacturers. And here's the issue. The top Z-Wave Plus smart switch manufacturers include Zoos, Innovelli, Honeywell, GE and Brighton, Jasco, Homeseer, and Leviton. Wow, that's a mouthful. Even though they're not Z-Wave, Lutron Caseta is another prominent player in the smart home switch arena, and many of these switches wire in differently, so there's no one-size-fits-all solution. If that's not confusing enough, there are two generations of Zoos smart switches, each that are wired differently. The Zoos Gen 1s use a dumb add-on switch that requires you to change the wiring in the add-on switch box, while the Zen 26 and Zen 27 require no rewiring at the add-on switch box. Innovelli also has two generations of Z-Wave Plus smart switches. This Gen 1 switch wires just like the Zoos Gen 1, and this Gen 2 Innovelli has three different wiring options, while also supporting no neutral installations. Then there's the GE and Brighton, Honeywell, Homeseer, and Jasco lineup, each using an aux switch and, of course, wiring in differently than the Zoos and Innovelli switches. If your head's not already spinning, we'll throw in the Leviton Decora Smart Line, which wires mostly like the Jasco line, but there are some differences and more options with the add-on switch. And finally, you have the Lutron Caseta line, which has its own special needs when it comes to wiring. So how do we make sense of it all? Well, that's what we are here to figure out. Let's go over to my website, which can be found at either azhb.com or diysmarthomeguy.com. Same place, different address. Ain't the internet great? Up at the top, you will see a link to my how-to section. Open the menu and you'll see an option for three-way switch how-to. Open that and click the start here option. As it says at the top of the page, the information here is for reference only. Switch manufacturers change things all the time. You should always check their documentation just in case mine is uh, out of date. The first thing to keep in mind is that there are five options for three-way switches when it comes to add-ons. There's the dumb or mechanical toggle switch, the smart or aux switch, running two smart switches in parallel, and with some special handling, you can use the Lutron Pico remote. Number five is a just-released solution from Zoos that allows you to use a mechanical momentary switch. That'll be on the website as soon as I get it through my early bird testing. Thanks, Zeus. Here's an important tip. Don't make your switch decision based on the type of add-on. In fact, that's the opposite of how you should be making your decision. Step one is to figure out what type of wiring you have in your house. There's a link to the main how-to page that shows the nine most common wiring methods for three-way switches. If you find a wiring method that's not listed, send me a private message over on Facebook and I will try to help you get it sorted out. Once complete, I will add the solution to my site to help out that poor next guy. The most common solutions that you will find are method 1 and method 9 in these diagrams, but you'll want to use these diagrams to figure out exactly what you're up against. It might be one of the other ones. Method 1 splits the line and the load between boxes. By this I mean that the line voltage comes into the wall box 1 and the load is connected through wall box 2. You'll see a three-way conductor wire that travels between the two boxes for control. Method 9 has the line and the load in the same box. In this configuration, you'll see the line wire come into wall box 1, into a wire nut, and back out to wall box 2. And these are also the most common scenarios that will be provided by most switch manufacturers in their wiring diagrams. There are other methods that bring the voltage into the light box and only rely on the switches for control. These are a bit more complex to figure out and to rewire, which is why it's important to figure out your wiring in advance. Some smart switches don't support this wiring method at all. For the sake of demonstration, we'll assume that you've confirmed that you have wiring method 1 for your three-way circuit, and we'll go back to the main page and see what our options are. With method 1, you're in luck. Each of the switch types listed has a solution, which means that you're free to pick whatever switch slash add-on configuration that you fancy. Yeah, I said fancy. What about it? But if you had something like wiring method 5, which is one where the line comes directly into the light box, 
your options are going to be very narrow. Looking at our solutions table, you'll see that only the Inovelli Red Series Dimmer, Inovelli Black Series Dimmer, and the Lutron Caseta No Neutral Required Switch can tackle this problem. And as a side note, these yellow boxes that you see here do have solutions, but the wiring is a bit complicated, so you may want to choose something easier if you're not comfortable with these wiring puzzles. Okay, now that you know your original wiring method, which we said was method one, let's look at the options in detail. Solution A uses a mechanical toggle switch, which is a switch that was probably already in the wall. The advantage to this solution is the cost. It's pretty cheap. On these diagrams, the pink box that you see here requires you to change the wiring in that box, which you would expect when you're wiring in a smart switch. The blue boxes require no rewiring, so it's pretty simple to figure out where you need to focus your attention. The disadvantage to this solution is that if you're using a dimmer, you can't use an add-on switch to do the dimming. It also leaves you without the up is on, down is off experience from the add-on switch, and it doesn't support scene control. Option B also uses the mechanical toggle, but it does not require rewiring. Option B is also inexpensive and is perhaps the easiest solution to install, but like option A, no dimming and no scenes. Solution C uses a smart add-on or aux switch. These switches only have two terminal lugs and require a neutral wire. They run anywhere between 15 and 20 bucks, so more expensive than the dumb add-on switch for sure. And even though you need to wire them in, they're pretty straightforward. The nice thing is that they provide this consistent up is on, down is off experience as well as dimming. However, still no scene control from things like double tapping the switch. This solution covers the GE and Brighton line, Home Seer, Honeywell, and Jasco. And I should point out that the new lineup of Inovelli switches can also use a regular rock switch and you just pick up one of those GE or Honeywell or Jasco or Home Seer aux switches and you'll be good to go. Solution D is for non-neutral situations and other than that, it's like option C in that it requires an aux switch. This solution uses the Inovelli Gen 2 dimmer and can be a lifesaver for some of the more obscure wiring methods. Solution E uses the Lutron Caseta line. An advantage of this solution is the flexibility. I've not seen a wiring scenario that won't work with this switch. The cons are that the Lutron runs on its own radio network, so unless you're using a Wink Hub, you'll need the Lutron SmartBridge Pro to integrate it with SmartThings or Hubitat. Also, it doesn't have a consistent Decora style interface on the switch itself, so you really need to be committed to the Lutron lineup if you're headed that way. They also cost a bit more than Z-Wave and Zigbee switches, but they do have this awesome wireless Pico remote, which I use all about my house. Solution F uses two smart switches. They're a little bit more to wrap your head around when you're installing, and it doesn't fit a lot of wiring situations. But through the use of Z-Wave Association, you can link both switches together and have full smart switch capabilities from all sides. More on Z-Wave Association in an upcoming video. And finally, if you are a Leventon fan, and frankly, why wouldn't you be, their new line of Decora smart switches is covered under solution LV. By far the easiest of all of these solutions is the solution B, since it doesn't require any rewiring of that second switch box. And solution B can be used for both Zoos and Inovelli Gen 2 switches. There's a listing of the switch part numbers on step four of the webpage. In this case, the Zeus 26 and Zeus 27 will work as well as the Inovelli LZW30 and LZW31 switches, and that is both the red and the black series. Under the Solution B description, you will see a link to the Solution B webpage. You can also get any method or solution from the main table. Now let's look at something a little more complex. We talked about method five earlier, so let's get into that. In this method, the wiring from the circuit breaker goes directly into the light. Then they use a two conductor wire to get down to the switch box. As you probably figured out, a three-way switch needs to have three wires to function. A line or power wire, a neutral wire, and a load wire to power the light or whatever's on your circuit. Since this wiring method only has two wires that go to the first switch, a normal smart switch just won't work. So let's go back to our solutions table where we can see that only the Inovelli Gen 2 and the Lutron Caseta will fit the bill. For the Inovelli, this means that we need solution D5 and for Lutron, we would need solution E5. It's also important to point out that only the Inovelli Red Series or Black Series dimmer will work for solution D5. This is because we need to take advantage of the no neutral capabilities of the Inovelli dimmer, which the Inovelli on off switch does not support. In this case, you'll need to wire in the Inovelli as a no neutral switch, and you'll need to use a smart aux switch. The neutral wire simply gets capped. 
There are also specific settings required inside the Innovelli switch, which is described in the Innovelli dimmer review video, link below. We also have the option of using the Lutron Caseta, which is again, solution E. In this solution, you just wire in the main switch as a no neutral installation, then you install the wireless Pico remote in the second box. All of the wires are capped and you're off and running. If you're interested in the Lutron Caseta, there are two video links of interest below. One is for the three-way switch install and the other is for integrating Lutron Caseta with the Hubitat. Lutron will also work with SmartThings and Wink Hub. If you're a Leviton fan, there are a few points to take note of. The wiring solutions are provided in the LV solution page. You'll want to take special care when wiring these ends since they mark their switches differently than the other manufacturers. On the diagrams, you'll see that the line terminal is marked as BK, the load terminal is marked as RD, the traveler is marked as YL slash RD, and the neutral is marked as WH. The other piece of important Leventon information is that each switch has a dedicated remote switch. You want to pay close attention to the wiring diagrams provided by the manufacturer for the matching remote switch. There are options here as well for the remote switch. Some switches are compatible with what they call coordinating a coordinated remote or a matching remote. And on the matching remote side, you have options for with LED and without LED. My diagrams don't fully explain this, but there is enough information between my diagrams and the Leviton diagrams to get it all sorted out. I'll keep updating my diagrams to make it as simple as possible as time permits. And in some situations, like wiring method LV4, you'll only have the option of using that coordinated remote since it doesn't require power to operate. Hope that simplified how to use the how-to section on my website, and I hope it gave you enough confidence to tackle three-way switches. You got this. I've got faith in you. Don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to click like. Over here are a couple of World War II documentaries that you might enjoy. Till next time, cheers.